Here is a lovely project that allows you to plot the location of Android and iPhones onto a web-based map, and it runs quite happily on a Pi. There are a lot of facilities like tracking, geofencing and alarms, but these are left for you to discover. The purpose of this video is just to get you up and running in the first instance. For reference, this is a new Raspbian Buster version running on a Pi 4. With my usual bad habits, I'm running this as a root user, because I just love the power. Add sudo to the front of every command shown here if you're a conformist, or do a one-off sudo su to temporarily promote yourself to root. The toilets are at the rear, and we're not expecting any fire alarms. This journey would only take a few minutes, so if you're ready, strap in and we'll be underway. First, enter our old friend apt-get install update to get up to date, and then install two open Java packages and the SQL server. Once the prompt returns, we will commit another bad habit and just quickly establish a database for Tracker to use. You'll obviously pay more attention to the security of this database if you take the project further. All of the software we need is now installed, so let's go and grab a copy of the Tracker package. There are a number of ways this can be achieved. Probably the quickest is to open a browser and go to tracker.org download. This page displays links of all the different operating systems that Tracker has been compiled for. As the Pi uses an ARM processor, this is the option we require. The link is displayed here when hovering the pointer over the hyperlink. Right click to copy this link and save typing and errors. Return to the console and copy the link after the wget command to give. You can use the ls-la to inspect the changes. A copy of the compressed zip file is now ours, so it needs unzipping. So, unzip. You can do an ls-la to see the files. There is a file called tracker.run, and this is the installer. The permissions on this file include the x for execute flag. So, let's execute it with a dot slash tracker.run. This installs all of the files in the correct places and establishes the required configurations. The home of tracker is slash opt, so we can change directory and look around with ls-la. We can start tracker with this command. And to prove it's working, by returning to the browser and enabling the self address 127.0.0.1, but add colon 8082, as this is the port tracker runs on. There's a warm wave of achievement if the site appears, and add user equals admin and password equals admin to reveal the full page. Have a poke around inside the package and change the default admin password. In the background, the package is up to date and well behaved. You can gain an insight into what is happening and control its behavior by typing commands like system control status tracker. Start it using the system start tracker and enable it to start at every reboot by entering systemctl enable tracker. Flush with success, we can now unleash this defensive pie onto the internet so that it can be seen globally. This is a general process. A step-by-step -step description is not practical, as every router is different, so here is a general overview. The Pi is typically connected to a home router. The router is connected to an internet service provider, and thence to the internet. The internet relies on addresses to root packets. One familiar form of address consists of four numbers separated by dots. The ISP holds a block of these and allocates one to your router. You can discover this by entering what is my IP into Google. It turns out that the internet has been far more popular than designers expected, and we've run out of old IP addresses, and they are valuable things. This has two effects. The ISPs have to share their allocated IP addresses amongst their customers. Unless you've paid for a permanent or static IP address, your address can change. It's dynamic, so beware. The second effect provides another function for the router. It shares a single IP address around your home or business. It does this by generating its own range of special IP addresses. This is why you always see addresses like 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1 in every home. They're all allocated locally by each router. So how do we deal with this duplication in our setup? Well, internally, the Pi has an address, or even two, allocated by the router. One for the wired Ethernet port, and one for the Wi-Fi connection. You can see them by entering ifconfig at the console. Make a note of the eth0 value, or wlan value, if eth0 is not available. The wired interface, eth0, is the better one to use. 
Now we need to map the external address through to the internal address and we need to open the safety firewall to allow external packets to flow in. Home routers normally allow you to do this via their own internal website, but what is the address of this website? Enter root into the console. It produces this output, where the router is called a gateway. Copy this address into a browser. Here, my value is 192.168.0.1, but yours may vary. You will need to pass the security check to reveal the menu and search for port forwarding. Open ports 5055 and 8082 for both UDP and TCP for the party's internal address. Enable if necessary and save. Optionally, there are other services that will map a name to your dynamic IP address. You enter your details into their system and run a small reporting program on your Pi. This reporting program allows them to track your changing IP address and map it back to your name. Some of these dynamic DNS services are free, whilst others require a small charge. The advantage of this choice is that you enter one name into all of the following configuration settings instead of an IP address. Your system will obviously break if the ISP changes your IP address at any point. For simplicity, we'll continue with IP addresses and follow the setup on an Android phone. Search Google Play for the Track Our Apps. There are two available, download both. The green icon is for the tracking client and the blue icon is used for the management system that we've already seen. Install and open the green client. There are only seven configuration options, of which two are vital. The first is the device identifier. This is a randomly allocated address that you can change if required. The second is the server URL. This is the important one. Edit this to show the IP address or the name if you've established it, but ensure that the colon 5055 is maintained. Press OK and then activate the service using the slider. There is a status button here that can be used later, but to all intents and purposes, the phone installation is complete. The final step is to return to the management screen and add the user. Click the Add button, enter any identifying name, and then the device identifier of the device you want to track. Now here's a glimpse of some live tracking and possibly the end of my marriage when the target finds out. add myself for equity, and now consider what may be achieved if we connect this system to say something like no dread. But that's for another time. I'm off to prepare some brief tea, and if you have been, then thanks for watching. Happy tracking.